Right, my name's Bob Newton, as you're aware from the list, um, and I build my own track. Um, when I got into Garden Railways about five years ago, I sort of looked into the various options, and being a joiner, uh, like making things myself, uh, I decided to have a go at building my own track. So the basic components are straights, curves, and obviously points. It basically works the same as Hornby set track. Um, you, you, you're limited with the curve, or you can make as many different radiuses as you, as you like, but you need a special form for each one. But I designed my garden railway uh, that that which is five foot two radius does most of the, the, uh, the actual curves that you need. So it's built out of brass ball head rail and 10 mile plastic chairs, uh, all available from either direct from 10 mile or from Brambright. Um, they're the standard chairs, and then for building the points, we do they do uh, a check rail. If you hold it in that space oh, yes. there, they can see you behind. Well, I'm, I'm still on last year mode. We didn't have this. Last year. <laughs> Ah, that's it, yeah. Right, yeah, those are the check rail ones. They're the standard ones, and there's a slide... There's a slide chair. So they're the three basic plastic chairs. Anything else you could make up with brass... Uh, brass strips, such as that, and solder, which I'll show you later for building the point. As you can see, going back to this, you can do that with it. It's rigid, it doesn't move. Uh, if any of you use the flexible Pico, you put it down and it does this and it does that and it expands and does whatever it wants. Once that's in and ballasted, it doesn't move. I'll show you how to do the ballasting shortly. So you start with a scrap hardwood door. All you basically need is a little circular saw to cut it into strips. I cut them 14 mil square. There's two advantages to that. One is it don't matter which way up it is, it's the same dimension. And for the ballasting, what you have is from the top of the sleeper to the bottom of the backing lat, you've got 20 mil. That means you've got 20 mil depth of ballast, like on the real thing that, that locates it. So it gives you a good depth of ballast to, to locate the track. So you cut, you could use scrap doors, as long as it's hardwood. This is mahogany because it's the most common wood. You can use oak, any, any, any hardwood. Cut it into 14 mil strips and then Again, you can use your circular saw, or I'm looking, I've got a full workshop, so I use a chop saw. You then cut it into sleeper lengths. Once you've got them all cut, you then drill, which you probably, going back to the chairs, I don't know if you've ever seen any of these, on the back, you can't see because it's so small, it has a lug on the back, so it presses into a hole. There's a... Stick it on the, down on, on there. Yeah. I'll put it there. You can see, you can, yeah, you can see there's, a, there's a lug on the back that goes into a hole. These are actually... If you're familiar with 10 miles own track, these are actually... All they, they make these for is for their point work, because their points are made out of plastic sleepers with holes in that they push into. On the back, they, they're basically shaped like that, and they spring out. But on wood, you simply rely on that to grip in the hole. Um, I've purchased in the past track off of other members that have got fed up with it, because if you just drill a hole and push that into it, it comes out again. <laughs> I see some smart. Somebody may have had this problem, have you? Yeah. 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 
The way you stop it is, and it's quite simple, it's called super glue. So going back to, you've got your, your, your plain uh, sleepers ready for drilling, that's a drilling jig. You push the sleeper in, that's, that's an ejector pin at the end, and using a drill with a stop collar on, which is basically a bit of round bar drilled and pinched on to set the length of the drill, with a drilling machine or electric drill, you drill down to the stop in both positions, which gives you a shallow blind hole, just slightly longer than the uh, than the pit. Then what you do? I haven't brought it with me because I usually end up with a mess with the super glue. Use either um, a thin or a medium viscosity. The medium is probably the better. You want. One drop of super glue on top of the hole, and it'll it'll sink into the hole. And then you start. Should have some glue in there. No, I haven't. Um, no. Oh yes, I have. On, on there. You start. Another th mistake not to make is make sure you put. This, this, this two bolts one side and one the other. And you always put the two bolts to the middle because then the, the, the wedge is on the outside. If you put them on the inside, you find that your flanges bounce, bounce over them. So what you start it into the super glue and then using a slot screwdriver, gently push it down all the way. Once that glue has gone off, I can show you, I can find a, use the full length, I've usually got a short bit. That's one that's been glued. And there's a right and a wrong way for this bullhead. And if you've ever used any, you know that it's hardly any difference. So it doesn't really matter. If I put that in there, those of you that have had experience know that within a few months they come out. This will probably prove me wrong. They do occasionally come out. I've literally ripped that out of the plastic chair because the super glue has, has held it has held it into the hole. Because what it does, it forms a glue. It, the, the, you can't glue this plastic with super glue, but what it does, it forms a pocket that those fingers go into, like a dovetail. So. You won't have the problem of the of the chairs coming out. That's another reason for doing them so deep, because it's a blind hole. If you used a thin sleeper with a through hole, the glue would run out the other side. I've literally had. If you get wood that's porous, I've had occasions where, when you push that in, the hydraulic force actually forces the super glue out the end grain. <laughs> The only disadvantage with that is sometimes it does that and it sticks to your finger. But <laughs> that's the basic sleeper. And then once you've got 24 of those per length, because these are yard lengths, once you've got loads of these done, the next stage is put things away and I don't lose them. Is to build the track, this is the first jig. This is basically MDF, or ever comes to hand, and it's a series of holes at the correct spacing for the sleepers. So what you do is, you, you drop the sleepers in, all the way down, getting this the right way up so that the small bit is at the bottom you simply slide them in obviously I haven't got a full complement of sleepers but you sort of get that one part away then the other one goes a bit further and gradually work your way along the uh, along the whole length Sometimes you get part way and it's too tight, 
And the trick then is to take those out and thread them back on from this side. <clears throat> so what you end up with is that you lift it out and you've got a length of sleeper and rail. The only problem is that they go where they want so it needs to be made rigid. So, next jig. The secret is jigs. To make a straight length, you take it out, you turn it over, and as you can see, it's got uh, a, a spacer in the bottom to hold the rail, and these are to, to support the bo bottom of the sleeper, because when you, when you staple the backing lats on, it needs to be solid. So that keeps it straight, and they support it. So you, you settle it in there, it's nicely firm, and then you put on the backing lats. This microphone is um, What these are, are roof tile lats, tantalised roofing lats. They're the inch thick ones, the thicker ones. And again, with your circular saw, you cut six mil strips. I think you get about five, maybe six, out, out of a lat. What you need to do is pick lats that don't have any knots, which sometimes is easier said than done, but if you, um, pick them with as few knots as possible, because where there's a knot, you end up with short bits, which do get used on the curves, but if you get too many of them, uh, you're struggling for your straights. Um, but, but Bob, if people haven't got the workshop gear that you've got, well, you, could, you could actually buy something like that out of a DIY shirt or something, couldn't you? You, um, you really... The, the basic thing you need is a little electric saw bench. Um, because you can, you can cut the sleepers with that, and you can cut that, and you can cut MDF to make your, your patterns. Um, so the, the basic minimum would be a small bench circular saw, which you can get for not a lot of money from Machine Mart, B&Q, places like that. Um, another, the only other electrical item that you would need would be a jigsaw to cut, to cut those, those out, which I'll come to later. Um, so you need some PVA glue, blob, 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 on each one, and you put one that side, same again this side, and then to hold them, mainly while the glue goes off, is a stapler, and it's, uh, it's still actually got staples in, but the type like this, that will take pins, you know, the, the nails option. So with nails, you just put a nail in each, in each one. Sometimes they don't go all the way in, you have to just finish them off with a little hammer, because the, the wood varies in hardness, and sometimes they penetrate all the way, and sometimes they don't. So a, a nail in each one, which then, showing you with a finished length, when you take it out, gives you a straight length of track. So that's your straight ones, which you use, the, which you use the most of. Now for curves, and again this is where jigsaw, or in my fortunate case I've got a bandsaw, you, you need a minimum of a jigsaw, because what you do to make this curved jig, I'll show you on the back, basically it's one piece and you cut, so that piece laps onto the top. Um, these are five foot two radius. You can make them any radius that you require, but the, the, the tighter the radius, the more difficult it will be, obviously, to bend the track. Um, but you, you could theoretically go down to a four foot radius, but it'll need more jiggling about to get it into the jig. So that's your basically a jig. So a piece of MDF, piece of plywood, cut to the radius, lapped on, and these are little bits of hardwood, same principle as the straight one, it's to hold the rail. So to put it into here, um, out of the jig again, centralise it, and starting at the middle, I'll go this way because of the camera, you gently tease it round 
until the rail is held by the little hardboard packers. But as you can see, the sleepers don't look right. So basically what you do is you imagine your radius point down there and you just tease them round. And because real track is never perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect. So when you're happy, and if it looks right, it is right, the old motto. into a theoretical radius point. Now obviously with these you can't use a straight from either end so you have to do it in pieces. Um, that one bridges that gap, that one bridges that gap. So you, you've got a continuous of, continuous of one all the way through and the others holding the bits. And again And I'm giving that some force, I'm not, you know, it's, it's rigid. So basically to do that, again, it's this, this is where you use all your bits in between the knots. <laughs> um, I should be able to do this without looking at that. But. So it's a short one, it's the same principle, blob of glue, short one, short one, one in the middle of the angles, and that, so it's sort of just touching at either end to get the maximum that way. A pin in each one. And hey presto. If that was that had been in there instead of that, immediately, and you don't have to wait for the glue to dry, if you take it out gentle, put that to one side, it's perfectly okay. Uh, the, the pins have got it until the glue goes off. So you can you can do a continuous you know, one after the other. So it's surprising how much track you can make, you know, like two or three hours in an evening, you can do a load of sleepers, the next night you can make up a, you know, a load of track. <coughs> so it doesn't take you long to do a reasonable amount of track. So I will take that out of the, put it back on there, I think, out of the way. can quite often pick up second hand track. This bullhead rail at 10 mile make their own flexible track with the plastic sleepers. Um, so quite often you can pick that up in the member to member off of um, uh, you know, the sales page in the magazine um, and either throw the plastic sleepers away or do like I did one year and put a box full in member to member and somebody else buys them. <laughs> So it's a good it's a good way of getting the the, because the if you have to buy all the components new it, 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 it's not a cheap way of building track but if you if you're lucky and you get stuff second hand it brings the cost down so that covers straights and curves now a complicated bit but not as complicated as it looks once you have got the jig and you know how to do it. So that is the jig for the points. That is actually that hand. Again, it's got backing lats on, which keeps it rigid. That's the problem with the 10 mile points. They're a nightmare. They, they separate, the plastic chairs come off, the, the, where the slide chairs are, they're not fastened at all. These, again, are, uh, are solid. So the jig, that jig does left and right hand points. And the way it does it is, that's a right hand point. If you want a left hand point, if I can do this without them all falling out, in the back is six screws. You take those screws out, you take the back off from there, and screw it on this side, and hey presto, from the other side, you've got a left hand point. So you only need one jig. Okay, it's a piece of MDF. And this is where you need your jigsaw, because you've got to cut and clean up with a file the slots. 
you can make it any length, you can make it any radius um, to suit your own requirements. Um, because it works like set track, I've got some double track, and if you want to cross over, two points together like that gives you eight inch track centers. If you want six inch track centers, you cut those two off, and there gives you six inch centers, or one would give you, you know, you can, you can, you can adjust your track centers accordingly. But as I say, you can make these to, to whatever requirement you, you require. So, you've got your jig, you've cut your square sleepers, but these are all different lengths. Apart from the two at either end, which are, that's why they've already got the chairs in, the standard, standard sleepers. So that's the longest, that's the shortest, and again, if you're making several points, say you're making four points, where you'll cut four of them, 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 and then I'll, I'll put them together, and I haven't got one, I used to have a bundle. You put them together in a bundle with some tape round until, until you, you're ready to use them, and you know you've got a set for, for one point. You use the drilling jig, and because that's straight, they're all the same distance in. So all you do is, you drill one end of each one, because that's, that's a standard distance in, these all vary. So put them all in with one hole drilled, you then put in a standard chair, going back to this because they're not all standard, so it's standard, standard, standard. Check rail, check rail, check rail. Standard, 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 standard. <coughs> slide rail, <coughs> slide rail, slide rail. And what I do now there, I actually put a, a brass strip in, which I'll explain, which ties it all together. But otherwise you would put a slide rail chair in. Once you've got those in, and again this is where the preparation is letting me down slightly, you cut straight rail, the correct length for there, and where the taper rail meets, you file, and again I haven't bought the file, I have a, a large flat file, put this in, into a, you know the clamp on vices, put it into the vise, and gently file the side of the rail down until you've got the step in for the blade to go into, and that's the only that's the only filing required on that one. You can then slide that in. Uh, there's two trains of thought with building points. Some people will tell you to start with the frog rail and work out. I prefer to start with the outer rails and work in because these are the longer rails and to me you get a more accurate point. If you get that slightly wrong, these, these, these can be even, even further out. So I start with the out and work in. So the next one is the curved rail. And again, I haven't got it. I have an automatic... Oh, I've got five minutes. Oh, I've only got an hour. I've only got half an hour. I'm doing better than last year. I never got this far. <laughs> we'll be talking faster. You can overrun a little bit. Yeah, okay. With an automatic centre punch, there's um, if you can see, there's a red line, which is the, the line of the rail. Where it, where it theoretically crosses, you put a centre punch mark, and you then drill those with... Drill for everything, that's the one that fits in there. This one's got a lot shorter, because all this does is drill the depth of the hole. It's not going through a piece of metal. So that drills the holes around there. Again, you then glue in the relevant chairs. Again, you've got three there that are check rail, and those are slide rail. You then cut another rail, sort of holding it. It's better to cut it slightly longer and trim it back. 
rather than, than cutting it short. Again, mark where it needs to be thinned, the same principle, you file, you file that out to form the recess, slide that one in, you've got the, the two outer rails. Moving on. Sorry, can I just ask a question? Yes. You, you say drill your rail lines on that side. Yeah. How do you come to that measurement? Basically, um, when, when you make the jig, this line is, I don't know, it's a long while since I've done this. The easiest way to do it is... Is that your five foot two radius? Yes, um, it's not quite five foot, it's, it's, it's more a, a slight compromise. Theoretically, it is, five, it is round about the five foot two, so you can use one of these in a... Mm -hmm. You can insert it into a curve, but it's not exactly, but it's, it's not far off. It's always a slight compromise, because that bit is more or less straight, and that bit's straight, so it, it, but theoretically, it is... It is that curve. Um, as I say, I can't remember exactly how I did it. Um, I probably put the length of that on top and made a few marks, so you could use you could use that as a guide. Yeah. Okay. It's fair yeah. Fair. So it's a bit, little bit of a yeah, or or the, the old method of a, a metal ruler, you know, and and. and bend it to, to, till it looks right. Um, yeah, so it's, it's in your initial setting out. As I say, I can't remember exactly how, how I did this. I think on the association website there are some templates. For yeah, some as well, yeah, so. yeah you, you, you can actually get Pico point templates as well to use as a, as a guide. If you, yeah, yeah, Pico do, do uh, for their 32mm 30, track. So yeah, you've got the inner and the outer. Fighting time a little bit now. So to, to then set out, you've obviously you've got those because they're standard. So to do those six, the next jig is that, and it's, that's actually a piece of um, door handle, spindle, square, square metal. And it's filed, yeah, can you see the section? It's, it's got a slot in it that clips over the rail going to be a little difficult because I'm not actually constructing. So assuming you've got that rail in, it clips over that, that rail that's in position and the holes that are drilled in it, there's actually two in this because it's actually made to do dual gauge, 32 and 45, with another drill, the last drill of this of the set, you drill through there and it then produces at the correct 32 mil centering, you shall a hole for those three check rails. So there, there, and there. You would also use it there, there, and there. And then these are basically two bits of rail with the ends filed to a point. And you, you really do need a point. Don't leave us exaggerating. Imagine my fingers. Don't leave it like that. You want it literally to a, a, a fine point, otherwise your wheels will climb over. Um, so file them to a point and set them in. What's next, Robert? Uh, next are the, the blades. And I learned a lesson again here. Cut them, cut them longer than you need and put in, the first bend you put in is, is this bend here, and this is a very shallow one. So put that bend in, and then you can drop it in um, to gauge the other length later. Um, I have another jig. To hold that distance, Again, it's another piece of square bar with, with slots in, and they're designed to actually hold the check rails at the correct distance and spacing. Um, 
So that end is slightly cranked round. This end, again, you file to a point to fit into the notch. There are four standard chairs there, which again, you use your drill to jig, uh, your, your jig to drill them. Everything else, then, is brass strip. We've got some bits in here. There are three bits. There's one through there, one there, and one there, which are strips of brass. You drill um, a hole in either end and pin them down with brass pins to hold them in place. And then everything there is soldered down to these, which forms a, a rigid section there that won't move. This, this rail is the same. You start with that bend. You must get that in alignment, especially on the curve. If you don't get that, that point in line with the edge of that rail, your wheels will climb over the frogs. And I know to my experience that on the early points I had quite a, a performance getting them right. So getting, getting that is, is critical to ensure smooth running. So that one, again, is basically the same. I'm having to skirt through it a little bit quicker than I would have liked. At this end, again, like I said earlier, I now put a solid brass strip through there because the problem you get is these inner and outer rails, especially in hot weather, can start doing that. And when they do that, and if they go that way, the, the blade isn't in the hole, it's on the surface of this rail. So what it does, it locates them rigid so that they can't do that and you don't get a problem of it climbing onto the bit of the rail where it's not supposed to be. These tie strips, I used to buy them from 10 mile, but they're a bit expensive for what they are because all they are is another strip of brass. So now I make my own. So there's a strip of brass tie rail through to hold those and the one that comes through longer on this side for the, uh, for the point lever. Um, again, to set, to set the distance, you have to partly by eye, and again, you can, you can use the jigs to, to, to hold them. But again, it's a little, a little bit of trial and error and experience with them. These two sleepers are longer, which you can now see it's to, to hold the, the point lever. And again, once you, when you're soldering, it's just a bit of 1 16th round uh, brazing rod with a crank at this end. And where it laps on, you, you set it dead centre, set that dead centre, and then solder it, and it just nicely throws either way. Um, basically that's it. I mean, if you get a chance to have a look closer before you go, you can see better by looking at it. Just very quickly, seeing as I have brought it, let me very quickly show you how easy it is to balance the track. And then I'm done, honestly. <laughs> this is just to show you. All right, when you straight track, my track bed is uh, hardcore. You need a free draining track bed. Oh, one quick point, as you can see, the treated. I have, um, basically, it's a big seed tray from B&Q with a, dra a drain tap attached to it. You lay the, tra uh, the track in. First I do it with a, uh, a spirit-based wood preserver, not a water bait, you know, it's from the old the spirit-based. Let it sort of soak in for a minute or two and, and drain it. And then I've found that that isn't enough. The next treatment is 50-50 creosote, which is now available again because they've taken all the nasties out of it apparently. 50-50 creosote and old engine oil. So when you do your oil change, change uh, save your oil. So a 50-50 mix of that and soak it in that. So that's the, that's the treatment. So a free draining base, because if they lie in water, they will rot. So anyway, it's on your base. This is grit. This is a mixture of all sorts. 
it depends what part of the country you're in. Horticultural grit, you want small grit, ideally you want about four mil, certainly no more than six mil. Six, six mil looks okay, I think that's classed as a six mil, but it is, it is technically over, oversized, four mil is better. Put it in a jug, and you're just sufficient to more or less make the track disappear. Then, my dear old mother's better wear brush, a nylon brush, or whatever you can get, these nylon ones are brilliant. You just gently brush it level. And it's as simple as that. The advantage of this, as I said earlier, is the weight of that, it's because it's on this shiny surface, the, the weight of the ballast holds it. It's, it's, it's sliding on there. If you want to move house, you can simply take it up. But the other thing is you can actually level the track or camber it, because if you do that, like a tamping action, you can put a slight... If you've got a dip in it, you can, you can lift it up, tap it, put some more ballast in, just like the real, real thing. And as I say, if you move house, Sweep it all up, put it in a bag, and take it to your new house. You are going to go in there. That's just about it, then. And that's just about it. So I hope that's given you uh, a basic on how to build track. Have you got any?